now you're overdoing a little bit. <laughs> Thank you. You're a good group tonight. We had a little hitch for you people at home. We had a little hitch in the start of the show, a little technical trouble. But then, we'll never know. Well, we'll never, nobody will ever know, right? <laughs> anyway, I appreciate all the cheering, but uh, you don't fool me. I'll tell you why. I have an office with a window, and I can see you standing in line <laughs> as you're waiting. You were cheering the guy who hit some guy in the fender out there. <laughs> you applaud anybody. <laughs> huh. Uh, you like it? Look like the Mater D at the club zipper. <laughs> It's a pink suit. No, it's not just pink. Come on, that's pink. Is that no, pink? No, this is pink mint. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not going to say it's too easy. <laughs> anyway, you are super tonight. We had a rough crowd last night. You know you're in trouble when you walk out and you see a little old lady in the third row with a T-shirt that says, Gaddafi Groupie. <laughs> mean. By the way, I should mention this studio just went condo. So, if you folks want to stay, you've got to chip in $10,000 a piece for the rest of the evening. <laughs> See what happens when you start late? <laughs> Out of towners here tonight? Good. Super. This is a good place to come on. See a television show or the movie studios. But I should point out, if you're going to stay in Burbank tonight, there are some nice places to visit. I kid Burbank, but... Burbank has some new restaurants that opened this week. Uh, there's a Mexican restaurant, then Pepe Bismol's. <laughs> it is, I'm, I'm gonna try to tout you off Pepe's. It is a bad, bad Mexican restaurant. Uh, over every table, they have a pinata that sprays malathion. <laughs> I went in there for lunch the other day at Pepe's. A place setting consists of a knife, a fork, and a fly swatter. <laughs> But there, there are a lot of nice things to see. Yeah, there the famed Burbank Studios, Universal Studios are out here in the valley. And uh, have you been to the park next door? There's a park right next to NBC. It's a Buena Park, or Vista, what is it? Vista. Buena Vista Park. And it's, it's not a thrilling park. Uh, <laughs> they can't afford a duck. So what they have, or they, <laughs> they have a, a pigeon with swim fins. Have you seen it? <laughs> How many of you saw the picture, I think it was uh, in the front page of every newspaper in the country, of the Pope meeting President Reagan in Fairbanks, Alaska? Apparently they crossed paths there for about uh, a private 20-minute uh, meeting, and the Pope was overheard saying to the President, I'll pray for you, but I can't guarantee a miracle. <laughs> Everybody's hair goes gray. <laughs> But as you know, I guess the president is back in Washington from the China trip, and I guess it was fairly successful. Um, his biggest victory, I understand, there was getting the Chinese to develop leak-proof uh, cardboard containers so leftovers don't drip on your car seat when you, when you, when you go to a Chinese restaurant. You see. We have more than technical trouble. <laughs> technical trouble I can handle. This is... This is big trouble. I was thinking about the Lone Ranger today. Really? <laughs> anyway, uh, the Pope, what was I talking about? Oh, he met the Pope in Alaska. And the problem is, when you go to the Orient, I think it's about, what, an 18-hour trip to get back to the United States. And the President, obviously, was suffering severely from jet lag because he was heard to say to the Pope, let you and I talk, let the wives go shopping. <laughs> Can you imagine they met in the air terminal in Fairbanks, Alaska? I mean, President Reagan's got a great appointment secretary. I understand next month he's meeting Margaret Thatcher in a bus terminal in Tijuana. <laughs> How many of you watched, this is interesting. How many of you watched the Democratic candidates debate last night? <laughs> no. No. We have 500 people here tonight. Now this is, this is interesting. They had a televised debate. Did anybody? Nobody saw it. Well, let me tell you. Boy, that must make Jackson and Mondale and Hart very happy. Anyway, what they did, they, they sat in chairs, and they were questioned by ABC's political analyst, uh, Sander Van Oker. And Van Oker asked some very good questions, and the candidates had some very good answers. 
but not to those very good questions. <laughs> I guess you didn't see it. Here's some. Did you read about Boy George in the paper today? True. He was asked to be the spokesman for Baby Ruth candy bars. No, I'm not making it up. That's true. Have times changed a little bit? Oh. I understand last year they got Richard Simmons as new spokesman for Wheaties. <laughs> well, the breakfast of choreographers. <laughs> anyway, tonight we got a good show. We have Mr. Robert Blake is back with us this evening. We have a very, very funny young man who is... Um, I guess it's on a cable show called Not Necessarily the News, a very funny show. Rich Hall is here tonight. And, and uh, a gentleman who is a cartoonist syndicated, uh, he's, I think he's from Detroit originally, syndicated around the country. His name is Richard Gindon. He is with us. And whatever else happens, so stay where you are and we'll be right back. Thank you. Now we're going. There. Audience is hesitant because they don't think we're on the air yet. I should mention <laughs> the people at home for the first time and all the time we have done yeah. this show. I was just ready to come through the curtain and start the monologue. And for some reason, the picture from the cameras was not leaving the studio and going down to the tape room, mm -hmm. which poses a hazard. <laughs> Since we do the show the same day, in other words, today is uh, Wednesday, Thursday. 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 <laughs> You've been, you've been in meetings. I'm, I'm talking so about the president, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Anyway, uh, that's the first time, and it's quite a funny feeling to be out here. I finished the warm-up, go so right up to the last couple of seconds, yeah. and I introduce you. Yes. And you don't come out. Did you think something was wrong I with really me? I really did. I thought there was something wrong with you. I'm serious. Uh -huh. Yeah. I really did. I think technical, because we never had any problems. Well, that's, that's nice of you to be concerned. Oh, I am. Yeah. <laughs> I want to find out now why the picture didn't get. I'm intrigued in this. Bob, did we find out why the picture wasn't getting from here? Something about an electric bill. <laughs> the checks in the mail. No, there must be there must be some explanation. I yeah. mean, seriously. Anything you'd like to to tell us? It's so long. <laughs> you don't know, do you? <laughs> You don't know what happened, don't do you? He's gone. <laughs> okay. Anyway, what have we here? A lot of pictures. Yes. We have done something similar to this before, trying to show the way the the cycle of the the seasons work, the cycle yes. of the year. Uh, one thing. Um, what was I want to say? Storms. How storms form. Things like that. No, I didn't want to say that. Oh. <laughs> Give me, uh, give me one word. How one thing, cause and effect. Cause and effect. Uh, how you plant the seed, the flower grows. Yes. Uh, the bee comes and takes the, uh, the pollen right. and transports it to, to and makes honey. It makes honey. Uh, it's kind of a symbiotic yes. a relationship. We sit under the tree and eat the honey. No, I didn't want to say that. <laughs> anyway, what we have done. Cause and effect. All right, what? Cause and effect. Kind of the way things... Um, Yes, one thing. Yes, perpetuate. What? La Ronde in French. La Ronde? La Ronde. It's the circle. The circle. Ronde. Big deal. Yeah. <laughs> the producer knows one word in French. <laughs> La Ronde. That's two words. Been waiting to get it in for ten years. <laughs> anyway, this, this applies to the way things work in Washington. You can watch the monitor if you have any interest in this whatsoever. <laughs> If you don't, you can say, talk to the person next to you. But the home viewers will see these. Yeah. And if you in the studio can look at the monitors, you will see them. For example, it all begins with a spring shower, which falls softly on Washington, D.C., causing the cherry blossom trees to bloom on the White House lawn. The helicopter carrying President Reagan home from China circles overhead. The air blasts its rotor blades, blow the petals off the trees. Hmm. And under the eyes of former President Richard Nixon, <laughs> he was roller skating past on the sidewalk and listening to the 18 and a half missing minutes of the Watergate tapes <laughs> on his ghetto blaster. 
This causes, what does this say? <laughs> this causes Mr. Nixon to lose control and crash against the flagpole outside the Russian embassy. <laughs> knocking the hammer off the Russian flag with such force <laughs> that it travels six blocks to the Lincoln Memorial, where it hits Lincoln in the knee, causing the knee reflexively to fly straight up. At the exact moment, Speaker of the House Tip O'Neill, who had been strolling by the Lincoln Memorial, is punted in the buns by, by Honest Abe and hurdled over and 400 yards into the reflecting pool, creating a tremendous tidal wave. <laughs> which roars down Pennsylvania Avenue. <laughs> knocking over the old lady in the Wendy's commercial, <laughs> who was just walking out of Wendy's. The force of the water blasts the woman against the Iwo Jima Memorial, <laughs> where she clings desperately to a granite gunnery sergeant and finally discovers where's the beef. <laughs> Meanwhile, Senator John Glenn takes advantage of the commotion to sneak into the Smithsonian and hotwire his old Mercury space capsule so he can drive it back to Ohio, turn the mileage back, and sell it as a 57 Chevy to help defray the cost of his presidential candidacy. The capsule blasts through the wall of the Smithsonian and into the U.S. Mint, where it sends millions of dollars of currency into the air, causing several hundred congressmen to drop to their knees and scream, Hallelujah, it's a bribe from heaven. <laughs> One of the quarters, now get this one. We have to stretch a little bit, Casely. One of the quarters from the mint falls down the chimney of a punk rock bar near Arlington National Cemetery and into the slot of a jukebox where it plays A7, Michael Jackson hit single, Beat It, at full volume. The pulsating rhythm blasts out of the bar and into the tomb of the unknown soldier, where it awakens the occupant and startles him so that he screams out his name, rank, and serial number causing him from that point on to be called the known soldier. <laughs> there were a couple others in there. <laughs> Meanwhile, Britain's Prince Andrew, who is visiting in Washington, is so excited by the sight that you didn't see <laughs> that he mistakes presidential candidate Jesse Jackson for a news reporter and spray paints him white. <laughs> immediately losing Jackson the black vote, but gaining him the full support of the Pillsbury Doughboy, who was in town for a bake-off. This is going right into the toilet. Cause and effect. Another spring shower falls softly on the Doughboy, causing his yeast to rise too quickly. <laughs> and make the doughboy explode with a bang. The doughboy shrapnel slams into a cherry tree, causing a few cherry blossoms to fall slightly to the ground, thus completing the springtime cycle of life in Washington, D.C. Otherwise known as Le Round, right? Yes. But beautifully done. It certainly was your, but not your fault. If there was anything wrong with it, it was not the way you presented it. It was beautifully done. Just wonderful. <laughs> Wasn't it? Just you You're really pumping sunshine up the old... <laughs> anyway, tonight we have... <clears throat> Mr. Robert Blake is here. Rich, uh... Rich Hall. I know, I was a dramatic pause. Rich Hall. <laughs> And also, well, see, we have two Richards on, actually. That's why I took a pause. We have Rich Hall and we have Richard Ginder, who is a cartoonist, I believe, right now for the... Uh... <laughs> no, no, uh, for the Detroit... Detroit. <laughs> the De Detroit Free Press. Hmm? You're gone, I'm telling you. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> Okay, we got a good show tonight. We have, I just told you who we had. Well, you know, I'm mom. Repeat after me. They right? say we lose every day 
a few thousand um, neur so, neurinos, yeah, neurons from the yeah, brain, yeah. never to be replaced. Yeah. I went through a whole month's supply. <laughs> yes, Repeat after me. Wheel. Wheel. B. B. Right. Oh, come on. Right back. <laughs> we'll be right back. Yes, you all know. Is, uh... Robert Blake is a very skilled actor. He's been in a lot of motion pictures, television, and of course, won an Emmy for the uh, television series Beretta. And we like him to check in occasionally to see what's new in his life, if anything. Would you welcome Robert Blake? <laughs> Okay, get your little security thing to hang on to yes. there. Right. Calm down, John. You'll be all right. All right. <sighs> okay. Uh, the doctor is in. How are you? Uh, I'm so oh, I'm stumbling along magnificently. How are you? Is that a, is that a crew cut? I beg you, certainly that's a crew cut. Now, you didn't I, have that last time, did you? No. I go in the bathroom and I cut my hair and I don't know what's going to come out. It's one of those. Uh, that's what strange... we used to call the flat top or crew cut. Yes, ducktail flat top. That's when. Van Johnson said goodbye to June Allison and drove off into sunset to shoot down everybody in Okinawa. And that's where we had a flat top. Yeah, see, that was all my heroes was there. Well, that was big in the 40s and the 50s, but... Yes, uh... next time it may come out long and beautiful with earrings. I don't know. <laughs> you cut that yourself? I always cut my hair myself. See, I wasn't rich long enough to forget how to do that stuff, see? <laughs> how do you do it in the back? What, a mirror? You actually do? Grab a hunk of it, cut it, look at it again with the mirror, and then I get the thing and hold the mirror and go like that. Yeah. You have any idea what the price of a haircut is nowadays? If you uh, have... Yeah, well, the studio usually pays for it, and it's like a hundred bucks or something, but I don't see it don't cost me nothing, and that's nice. And uh, they, they, mm, You know, I remember as a kid going to Art's Barbershop. Uh, people love this, you know, going back. Kids say, who cares? <laughs> going to get your hair cut for 25 cents. Yeah. Yep. 11 cents for a movie? Yeah, but 25 cents for a haircut. Three dollars for the finest girl at Roxy's? Really? <laughs> well, I mean, I ain't saying nothing bad, man. You know, just that's the way it was. Why'd you decide to do this? You must have been I some didn't. kind of a mood. So help me, I didn't decide that. I just, you know, I'm uh, strange. That's all. <laughs> well, <laughs> living a different kind of life now. I'm going out and socializing, and you got to, you know, wash and shine your shoes and... All like you're not much of a you're not much of a you're not much of a socializer, are you? Oh, are you kidding, man? That was wonderful. I fell in love. Well, you, you're kidding? Yeah, for about a week. <laughs> now, last time we talked, you said you didn't you weren't seeing anybody. You didn't go out at all. You stayed no. home. Well, I just this was marvelous, and then I found out she was an actress. Well, now wait a second. And that was the end of the road. It said, "Take your tongue out of my mouth, darling. I'm kissing you goodbye." <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a sweet girl. <laughs> but listen, when did you find out she was? A, when did you find out she was an like actress? A, after the first week. Well, what did you? Didn't you ask before? I'm starting to sound like a socialist. I mean, a, a what does they call a kind of pig? You know, a, a male chauvinist. Male chauvinist. It's not that way. I mean, Joanne and Paul Newman and all like that, and Jessica Tandy and and they all mad. That's all cool. But for this actor. It just uh, can't go down that way. See, I can't, uh, I just, uh, it don't, it, uh, I had to explain to her. Now, you see, her name was Irene. You uh, got to understand this. I'm an addict. Uh -huh. And when it comes to certain kind of things like actresses or dancers or drugs or dope or booze, I'm uh, like the jackrabbit making love to the skunk. I ain't had all I want, but I've had all I can stand. <laughs> You have to truly Slightly reminiscent of Schopenhauer when you said that originally. <laughs> if I would let myself, I would go right back into all that stuff. You, are you putting... Uh, now, wait a second, wait a second. Huh? You're putting actresses in the same category? You mean they're just an ana me, anathema to you? Is that I have to stay away from certain things. Not because I want to, but because I have to. Because no, it's just I like have an addictive personality. Mm. That's right. I cannot go where people wear suits. I cannot do it. <laughs> Desks 
make me nervous. <laughs> well, I know that. I know that. And uh, just certain things like that. Like, I can't have a sports car or a regular car. I got to drive a truck or a four-wheel drive or a Jeep or something like that. Because if I drive a regular car, I go 9,000 miles an hour. I think I'm in front of a camera and it's the old stunt days. And a cop pulls me over and says, you're trying to kill somebody? What's the idea? So I just don't do it. So you have a... Uh, I own four-wheel drive junks with big, fat tires. When they go fast, they go... <laughs> And I know that I'm doing, you know, going too fast. Yeah. Well, I'm going to follow up on this romance follow, when we come follow back and into find the out sunset. What, what happened? Right. We'll, we'll be, we'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Yeah, buddy. Now, look, we've known each other a number of years. Yes, may it, may it please the court. You may know. it please the court. <laughs> and um, you, you pretty much, uh, you like to live alone. Yes. You don't like to go out a lot. Uh, so no. you meet this young lady, you find out she's an actress, and you say, okay, that's no good. Right. Um, what kind of a woman, uh, where, do, where, do you, where do you meet these people? Well, uh... Not uh, uh, just any place, man. I mean, yeah. in a gas station or something. I don't exactly know how to do it. I yeah. just say, uh, excuse me, uh, you're beautiful. Don't run away or you're married. That's good. Like That's that. good. No, that's good. And, good uh, opening. I just, but you say you want to have coffee, you want to go out. Now, I'm, a, you know, kind of a helpless romantic. I show up at the door with flowers and they think I'm the gardener or something. Is that the, do you really do that? Yeah, I stopped doing it because it looks kind of dumb. And we start driving someplace and I'm all spiffied up and then they start talking you know you got to find out about each other yeah find out if 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 uh they want to know why you got divorced see like if you're some kind of yeah. and then you want to know things about them too are they interested in having children or do they have a career are they interested in uh, actors you know uh, whatever something like that so you really try to establish you know, some kind of i just yeah. say look darling let me give it to you both of my knees are gone. I'm a busted up old wreck. My back is no good. This shoulder fell off way too many horses. Both these eyes have been blown up twice. I have no manners at all. I like to eat garbage. I don't know how to belch polite. I do things that disgust even me. I wake up in the middle of the night in a black raging inferno. I got thoughts in my brain that would gag even a maggot. I get up so tight. You couldn't get a dime up my fanny with a sledgehammer. I've been in therapy for 25 years, and I'm still nuts. Now do you still want to get linguini and clams? You sound like a real catch to me. What more could a girl want? And that's the upside. That's, that's, that's right. Now for the bad news. <laughs> then I wind up on it to hunger wash again, walking with my dog, say, what'd I do wrong? But you Look. see, you're, you're honest. You, you lay it right out there Gotta in front be, of me. Gotta be, because I want to get married again. You know, I like to get married. You tell like some girl that, and she says, that. hey, I still want to go out with you. She knows up front. That's right. It ain't going to be nothing where she's going to, you know, wind up no getting surprises. married to me and saying, what? Who are you? They're going to know, you know, right, right away. That, uh, now, are you the kind of fellow goes out that uh, doesn't make a move? I mean, a physical move right away? Uh... Well, see, that's that's all changed now. Uh -huh. You don't have to make a physical move. You don't have to do nothing. See, making love is easy. Talking is what's hard. Everybody's making love to everybody. It's, that's it's, true. It's, 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 it's if you can, you know, take a walk in the moonlight or, or I don't know. She's, listen, half of the people in the world are female. And someplace out there... One night, I'm going to be driving out in Bakersfield someplace on a hot night, and I'll pull into some all-night diner, and, you know, there'll be fly specks on the wall, and the <laughs> fan will be going around, and over there across the counter, she'll be slinging hash, and she'll look up and say, well, I thought you'd never get here, and her name will be Flo. <laughs> She'll be kind of like working. Ronald Coleman and Random Harvest. Yeah, right. <laughs> she'll be working for a guy named Sailor. And she'll have uh, two kids and live out in a and trailer eyes, out in the middle of meet. the desert. Yeah. And uh, I'll walk her home up some dirt road someplace, and the tumbleweeds will be blowing. And, and then we'll get to the trailer, and you'll see the blue light. Smell of alfalfa window. in the air. Yeah. yeah. And she'll say... Can I go with you? <laughs> She'll say, well, cowboy, why don't you pass this way again? Good. And I'll look at the desert night and smell her hair and say, I ain't going no place. She'll say, good, good, good. My feet hurt, and I got to put the kids to bed, come in on me coffee. And, and that's it. That'll be that, man. See, some people, 
dream small. Yeah. They want to find a multi-jillionaire heiress. I just want to find a waitress that just flow who makes that can spend some time with me. Yeah. Yeah. That ain't a lot, you know. You're gonna hear for every waitress in the country tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> From every guest. Do you think you'll be a better husband? Uh, well, I this think time? I'm a good I'm 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 a good husband. I'm kind of old fashioned. I'm a good father. I mean, I'm the best I can be, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, I think that I th I think, you know, if you want to get serious, I think that being a father or a husband or a wife or a mother is probably the biggest job there is in the world. You know, us, us kind of people that live in the fancy Dan, flashy, yada, yada, and going to Spallinis and Fellinis and all that jive. But there's folks out there that know that the highest calling they got is to hang in there and make survive. the family work. And survive. Yeah. yeah. Keep it together and, and make that, because that's what it's about. And if that ain't there, then, uh, hey, listen, but it's okay. I'm doing fine, man. So where do you want these dancing. offers when they come in? Do you want me to send them, uh, still send them on to you? Huh? When these offers start coming in, do you want me to just send them just, on to you? Yeah, whatever you can't use, that's just shift it right <laughs> <in>. <laughs> You don't like to travel much. I remember that. You don't like travel. To, you don't no, like to travel no. Much. Bakersfield no. is a long haul. Okay. I like to go to Bakersfield, Palmdale, Lancaster, New Hall, any place like that. Yeah. Cool. I've been traveling all my life, I man. Yeah. I started yeah. when I was two years old. I've been to Europe and flying all airplanes and I suitcases, motels. I don't like to sleep in the air. I don't like to sleep up high someplace. I feel like a pigeon. I think about all them people underneath me and over me, and I like some modern eerie move. I like to yeah. live in a place and know where you know my smells are around the room right. and stuff and yeah. like that. And, now you have you huh? haven't been in front of a camera in about what a year? Been a long time. See, well let's see. Where am I now? I've been divorced two years. The first year I didn't do nothing. I walked the wash and I went to the mountains and all like that, and uh, fell in love with a rock. And that's all I did with that. Then the second year, I've been under contract to Columbia and 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 uh, uh, want to. Well, they uh, pay you for not for not working, is that? Yeah. yeah. Well, but I mean, I've been writing yeah. uh, a project. Went to uh, Brandon Tartikoff. Hello, Brandon. How are you? <laughs> this is Skyler. <laughs> you got to have a cool name to talk to Brandon. Yeah. Brandon Tartikoff does not talk NBC to a guy named George. That's right. You got to be Dorian yeah. or, you know, something kind of cool. Skyler. Skyler, yeah, Skyler is cool. <laughs> Skyler, yeah, <Skyler's> cool. <laughs> no, Brand, Brandon's been very patient with me because yeah. I want to play, I want to do a priest in a series. Don't get tense. I got Why? it figured out, worked out nice. Well, they got tense. Robert Blake is going to play a priest. Why not? Priests don't punch people. I mean, how can you? A priest have a church in the ghetto? You're going to have a goat in the church? What do you mean put a church in the ghetto? Well, can't we put the church in, in, in Westwood or Laguna? <laughs> I said, may I tell you where you can put the church? Got it. <laughs> I think you'd be good as a priest. I wrote six. We wrote six scripts, and now I'm waiting to see what they're going to do, and that's cool. And in the meantime, call it Father Crazy. See, you no, know, it's called Helltown. I got, I got to see. I got in my bedroom because I haven't worked in a long time. I got a big photograph of a Panavision camera pointing right at me. See, yeah. So I'm always in front of the camera. When I get up in the morning, I got marks. I hit the marks to brush my teeth, and then I pick, so, <laughs> pick up my line. <laughs> so in case something comes up, you're ready. I'm to, ready. Ready to move. Yeah, I can stay fresh. Got the fundamentals all the way. <laughs> yes. Good to see you. You're fun. Thank you, man. We'll take a break. We'll be right okay. back. <laughs> Rich Hall is here tonight. Rich Hall is a very funny young man, very inventive, and he is one of the hosts of HBO's Not Necessarily the News. Uh, he's also a writer, and he's written a book, uh, and it's made it the bestseller list. It's called Sniglets, which is a word that you won't find in the dictionary, and that's what the book is about. Words that should be in the dictionary that aren't. Would you welcome Rich Hall? Good to be back here again. Feel pretty good. Indian food today, tonight for dinner. Indian food. You ever have Indian food? It's expensive, isn't it? Except tonight, my waitress showed up with a red dot on her forehead, so I got 50% off my check. <laughs> look out like that every once in a while. It's not easy being a vegetarian anymore. Except, well, I don't know, a lot of places have salad bars now. That's always a good deal, isn't it? Salad bar, free trip to the salad bar. There's a dream vacation. 
It's not even really a bar, is it? You never see anybody face down in the chickpeas there, you know? <laughs> five three bean salads maybe you better drive <laughs> vegetables are always violent how come vegetables always have violent names beets <laughs> squash <laughs> black-eyed peas <laughs> mashed potatoes if we go to a salad bar they have bulletproof glass over the thing there <laughs> we're trying to assassinate the carrots there or something <laughs> at least with vegetables you know where they're from right from the ground. Some foods, you have no idea where they're from. Ever wonder at what point in the dairy-making process the milk dud is made? <laughs> you really gotta appreciate the cow who, after the butter, the eggs, and the cheese, will go that extra mile to come up with a dud. <laughs> milk dud. Terrific. Glad to see the Olympics are coming to town. There's a lot of weird sports in the Olympics that you'll never see again. They should have the common sports in the Olympics, like fishing. Fishing's a great sport, isn't it? Why don't they have that in the Olympics? <laughs> It'd be a great sport. On your mark, set, <laughs> go. Loop. Bowling. There's a wonderful sport. Bowling. Bowlers are more than athletes. Bowlers are psychic. Bowlers somehow think even after they let the ball leave their hands, they can still control it just by twisting their bodies. <laughs> <laughs> Bola kinetics, I call that. It's one of my jobs is to make up words for things that should be in the dictionary but aren't. Sniglets, these are known as. Uh, Sniglet is any word that somehow got passed over by the dictionary. I don't know why. Like L acceleration. The mistaken notion, the more you press an elevator button, the faster it'll arrive. <laughs> Mott spur. The Mott spur is that fourth wheel in the shopping cart that never gets along with the other three. <laughs> or you can burbulate. To burbulate is to take an item off the grocery shelf, decide four or five minutes later you don't want it. So, of course, you always return it to the same spot, right? <laughs> to disguise it there, put the raid in with the ready whip there, you know. <laughs> Hozone. This is where one sock and every laundry load disappears to. <laughs> or a Cheerio magnetization, which is the tendency of the last four or five Cheerios in the bowl to cling together for survival. <laughs> Sometimes a sniglet can be a, uh, a unit of measurement, such as the igna second, which is that overlapping moment when even as the hand is shutting the car door, the brain is going, my keys are in there! <laughs> I can do some impressions with uh, plexiglass for you now. <laughs> Stole this from the salad bar at Wendy's earlier tonight. <laughs> yeah, they call it a sneeze guard. Did you know that? Now, why? Who's going to sneeze on the salad? What if they did? Who would notice? <laughs> Unless you got this up here, then there's a whole grisly story laid out right there. <laughs> I don't know, honey. Maybe I'll just get an omelet or something. That really... <laughs> Anyway, a lot of you are too young to remember vaudeville when everyone did impressions with acrylics. <laughs> the Department of Motor Vehicles. What do you mean I'm in the wrong line? <laughs> Let me see the supervisor. <laughs> Here, of course, is what they hear on the other side. A man in a front load washer. Get me out of here! <laughs> Hello? What is that, a quarter? Oh. <laughs> Too much Clorox! <laughs> Hi, welcome to P Piedmont Flight 411. Don't worry about those other planes, they're a lot further away than they look. Anybody walk? <laughs> In there. Los Angeles during rush hour. 
Get that piece of junk car off the road! <laughs> stuck behind that tourist in the Winnebago there. You're going, get that battleship off the road. I'm late for work. I live here. What do you want? Do I look like I want oranges? Where's the celebrity version? Get that battleship off the road. We can't forget you Volkswagen drivers. Come on, move it! <laughs> Wait for work here. <laughs> move the seat back, honey. That's a little bit... Where? It, what? Another pothole? Oh, no. <laughs> of course, there's the guy in the Winnebago holding up all the traffic to begin with. <laughs> My next guest is a uh, well-known syndicated cartoonist. He's been at it for about 27 years, and this is his current book, book called The World According to Carp. Would you welcome, please, Richard Gindon. Good to see you. I was looking through the book today and, and some of the cartoons. Uh, it's kind of everybody's desire to kind of make a social statement and sit back and comment on what's happening in this uh, rather bizarre world. Especially if you can work in your pajamas. Yeah. That's kind of a need that I have as a cartoonist. I think most of us are kind of Walter Mitty-like characters. Really? Yeah, this is kind of a... This is fun, but it's nervous. <laughs> in other words, you're kind of re reclusive when you do your, do your stuff? Yeah, I, I pretty much... Uh, I think most cartoonists do that. I think we, we tend to want to work at home in our pajamas, that only leaves about two professions that you realistically can work in. One is kidnapping. <laughs> the other's cartooning. <laughs> And I'm from the, you know, Midwest, and... Uh, What's your fascination with carp? Now, being from the Midwest myself, a lot of people don't know, know what about I, carp. What happened is I just... Uh, the book isn't about carp. It's not like no. the cat book, right? I just threw a couple of carp jokes in one time, just as a kind of little absurdity. I, I don't remember what it was. I think the first one said that carp, when they were first introduced into this country, were used as early breathalyzers. They figured anybody who was idiot enough to put one of those things in his mouth and blow into it had to be drunk. How many people and know what a carp is? You know what a carp is? It's a, it's a fish. Basically yeah. Midwestern, right? Maybe one of the first times that fish got a round of applause. <laughs> because it's kind of an aquatic cockroach. Yeah. People don't, people don't. And I started doing, occasionally I'd throw in a carp here and there. It's just kind of a, you know, just a little absurdity. And all, I may add, this whole program without federal funding. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, and so uh, it just kind of developed. The reader started writing in, and I got a file at home that's about a foot thick, which is more information than you need to know about to get carp. through Western civilization yeah. and find out about carp. You ever think about bag ladies, too? You find them interesting? Partially because drawing in the Midwest, I, there are different kinds of bag ladies. There's the bag ladies that are in Detroit. I work with the Free Press there. There are those bag ladies, and they are combat-ready bag ladies. They talk to buildings and that sort of thing, those kind of things. And then there's the others who are just kind of permanent choppers, who take a Lord & Taylor bag and fold it up and go downtown and shop for other people. And that's, it's a Midwestern phenomenon that... that right. uh, and I like these people a lot, because when you're brought up in the Midwest, you essentially... Uh, uh, I just blanked out on where I was going with yeah. it. Uh, you mean the sensitivity of the people, or what? When you, when you poke fun at them? Yeah, it's, uh, I think most people in the Midwest are kind of, they're fairly straight and fairly open and fairly easy to talk to and that sort of thing. And bag ladies are kind of very open and, and generous and that sort of thing. So I, I, I find that uh, they're good targets and they can say things that frighten me that I can give to them and they sound naive. Right. And uh, 
things that I can't say. Readers obviously send you jokes thinking this would be a great idea for a cartoon, I suppose. Do you ever use them or do you stay pretty much with your own? No, mostly because the column is, it's very much like asking for someone to let them write in your diary. And so essentially I don't, uh, I don't take jokes on the outside, but so, somebody just wrote me a funny line. They were saying she's starting an organization as she was looking at the, the trousers that her son uh, had just gotten grass stains all over. It was going to be called Mothers Against uh, Breakdancing. <laughs> And I thought, that's a good organization. I was thinking about breakdancing. In about 15 or 20 years, when they start having reunions, do you understand what's going to happen to their backs? <laughs> These guys are going to be going out of their traction. Because <laughs> they're going to be 40 or 45 yes, exactly. then. Can we show a few of your things here? Please. I, I, uh, they can see them I'll up be, here. Yeah, I the, captions, the captions are on the front here. <laughs> now, I don't know if I can read them because they're, they're, they didn't put them on the back of the... Uh... Now, how am I going to read these? Is there a... Can you see these at all? The problem is I don't remember them. Yeah. <laughs> There's a guy at a bar. He says, hi, I'm Bob, and I need someone to talk to because I've just finished this week's People magazine and my mind is racing. <laughs> I love these things. All right, so you can see the man sitting here in a chair at home with a seat belt. And the wife is saying, Harvey, sometimes I think you're just too cautious about life. <laughs> so, wonderful. There's a carp one there. That one was a little long here. Here's one here. I don't know if you can see this or not. A lady in the kitchen with the smoke coming out of the oven. The person in the other room is saying, Eunice Benson, about to go to plan B. <laughs> Somebody was just telling me that. They said, we live most of our lives in plan B. Plan it's B, not a bad contingent, idea, contingency. All right, can you see this one here? He is saying, I hate waiting. I wish time could be put in a microwave oven. <laughs> Good comments. Good comments. I don't know if you can read this or not, that, that's too long. Now, if people know who these are, a couple talking says, We liked the movie, but Roger Ebert and Gene Siskel sitting behind us talked all the way through it. <laughs> good, good point. We'll be right back. This, I think this is my favorite, Richard, out of all of them. The lady standing out in the cemetery looking down and saying, Henry, guess what they want for a new four-door Chevy? <laughs> that sums up life, right? Yes. Yeah. Thanks for being with us tonight. Well, have a nice week. I'm humbled by that applause.